بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتون إلا وأنتم مسلمون رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي وجعل لي وزيرا من أهلي أمين يا رب العالمين I just want to discuss brief two three incidents in the life of uh, Umar ibn Khattab radiyallahu an and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and the reason why I brought this up is how many times we have seen in the community where someone will say oh I have deceived by so and so I trusted him because I saw him in the masjid I saw her in the masjid and then eventually he deceived me she deceived me he fooled me he used to pray five times a day. He used to say only Jazakallah, Mashallah, Inshallah. I trusted him. I did business with him. And that's it. He deceived me. How many times we have seen this? So I just want to tell you, how do you really know if you know him? Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anh, by the way, this is a Sahih Hadith in Sunan al-Kubra. Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anh, during his Khilafah, a man gave a testimony to Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anh. And Umar said, I do not know you. How do I accept your testimony? Bring someone who knows you. Bring someone who knows you. Then he bring one of his friend and he says, Ana a'rifuhu. That Amirul Mu'minin, I know this person. You can accept his testimony. So he, Umar ibn Khattab said, Bi ayyi shayin ta'rifu. He says, what do you know about him? How do you know him? Tell me, what do you know about him? So he said, I know that he is very virtuous, incredibly virtuous man. And Umar ibn Khattab asked, asked him these three questions. And I want all of you to memorize these three questions if you want to check how this person is in reality. Umar ibn Khattab said that you are saying that this person is virtuous, you know him. Tell me this. First, فَهُوَ جَارُكَ adna. Do you know his private life? Are you the closest neighbor to him? Do you know what he does at the night and the day? He said, no, I don't know his private life. He said, okay. Okay. Then do you know anything about his financial dealings, about his job, about his work? Did you see him at work? Which just reflects his character, his piety. He said, no, I don't. I never had financial experience with him. He said, okay. Then did you travel with this person to see the character and akhlaq of this person? He says, I never traveled with this person. He says, so you didn't know his private life. You didn't get an experience about any financial transactions with him and you never traveled with him. He said, no. He says, Lasta ta'arifu. He says, then you do not know him, brother. <laughs> then your testimony won't be accepted. Bring someone who knows you really. What we are learning in a very simple language in this hadith, subhanAllah, in order to really know someone, we are learning a formula from Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anh. First, know the person from his business dealings it's easy for me to deceive you with a, a smiling face in the masjid but i might be musa with this smile but i might be fir'aun in my heart when you do business with me people are different at work when it comes to dollars and dirham and dinar they are extremely different so that's the first formula we are being asked to see if you want to see the character of the person Second, know the private life of the person. It's easy to deceive people with the public life. I have to give 15 minute khutbah, I can manage this smile in this 15 minutes. But whoever knows my private life, they know whether I can manage this smile and this good personality which I'm making in front of you. Is this real or is this fake? So know what the community members are saying or close relatives are saying or close friends are saying. Third, Travel with that person because traveling will really expose that person. In traveling, people are usually usually relaxed. Especially if that travel, let's say Hajj or Umrah, that will test the patience of the person. Second incident, almost within the same line. Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anh said, 
لا تغرنكم تنتن الرجل في صلاته انظروا الى حاره درهمي ودناره عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله عنه said that make sure that the person's prayer should not deceive you person's prayer or the whispers during the prayer the connection which he have with Allah during the salah should not deceive you if you really want to check the character of the person trust him with finances and then see his character and the last thing before I can end inshallah is the hadith of Anas radiallahu anh in Sahih Muslim Anas radiallahu anh used to serve Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam for 10 years so Rasulullah sallallahu was his boss basically 10 years 10 years is a big time it's not an internship for three months it's a 10 years you can really gauge the character of your boss and Anas radiallahu anh said Khadam to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam ashara sinin I served Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam for how many? 10 years ashara sinin 10 years wallahi ma qala li uffan qat wala qala li li shayin lima fa'alta kada and Anas said in these 10 years Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam never used any harsh language against me never he never said why you did this and why you didn't do this. He speaks aloud about his character, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the ability to internalize the character of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Please make dua for the entire ummah. Allahumma ansuri al-Islam wa al-Muslimin. Allahumma gzul man khazal adina Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa la taj'alna ma'ahum. Allahumma la taj'alna zamban illa ghafarta. Wa la hamman illa farrajta. Wa la daynan illa qadayta. ولا حاجة من حوائج الدنيا والآخرة إلا قضيتها يا أرحم الراحمين ولا مريضا إلا شفيت ولا ميتا إلا رحم ولا ضالا إلا هديت يا أرحم الراحمين الله